one of those UX improvements in Houdini 18.5 that makes creating certain types of motion graphics setups really easy is the chainsaw. And in our case, I want to use it to visualize a strand of DNA. And for that, I got in touch with our biologist of choice, Dr. Jeroen Klaus of Phospho Biomedical Animation in the UK. And he sent over a file, which I took and meshed it, which I'll bring in here. And it's this base pair of a DNA. So it turns out that when we drop down another line here, which we're going to use as this DNA's backbone, so the direction in which this is pointing, yep, up is fine. Let's make this 10 units long and use a chainsaw. We can build a quick and dirty DNA strand. This is clearly not what we want. So let's set up our chainsaw here. So as this geometry of this base pair is two individual geometries, the orange and the blue one here, the chainsaw automatically tries to find those individual pieces and alternate between them, resulting in this placement of the blue and the orange base here. Instead, I want to tell the chainsaw to use another attribute that's on this geometry here. And I'm middle mouse on this. We have written out a name attribute here. So let's just use that. And now we are sure that the chainsaw just takes the base pair instead of a single base when instancing it or when copying it onto this line here. However, those individual pieces are misaligned. So let's fix that in the chainsaw's alignment tab here, where you can select a forward direction. In our case, when you look at this file, I want this, the Y axis to be its forward direction. So let's change that in the chainsaw here. That is looking better. And now I'd like to give those individual pieces a bit of twist, which is this piece rotation here. And when you look in Wikipedia, you will find that the rotation of these individual base pairs in the most common types of DNA is 34.2 degrees, resulting in this strand here. Also, Yerun pointed out when I was building this, that this spacing of those individual bases, of these base pairs here, was a bit too wide. So we need to put them together more tightly, which I can dial in using this piece spacing slider here. And I want to drag in a negative value so those individual base pairs sit really tightly. Maybe something like this. Another detail that Jeroen pointed out is that this helical winding here is not as perfect in nature. And to simulate that, I'll just wire in a transform node in between my base pair file and the chain node here. And I'm going to use this to offset my base pair slightly from the center, from the world center here by translating it a few units along the X and the Z axis. Now, if I highlight my chain node again, I can see that this winding now is a bit more irregular. Furthermore, what I want to do, instead of using this perfectly straight backbone for my DNA, I want to give this a few additional points, maybe 24, and use a bit of noise to distort this backbone here, this line. I'm going to use an attribute noise for that, which I'll wire in here. Let's highlight this. And instead of noising our CD, our color, let's just take our position and add to it this noise with this amplitude here. So here's how strong this noise will behave. And maybe we should remap this. So let's fix this by checking enable remap RAM and just dial this down here. And the first point here should have a value of minus one. So now we are offsetting this in two directions, the positive and the negative components of my noise here. Maybe a bit coarse. So let's decrease the element size to make this a more slowly undulating noise. And after that, maybe let's just blur this out a bit, smooth it using an attribute blur. To smooth out this noise a bit. Let's uncheck pin border points. So now this is my new backbone. And let's see what the chain does with that. Yeah, we can see a slightly distorted DNA here. When I look closely, I can see that those parts here of my base pairs are squished. They are distorted. They are deformed. And I don't want that likewise here in these areas. So to fix that, I will go into my chain node here and drop down this rigidity tab here and enable rigidity. And now you can see that those areas which had been previously squashed are now keeping their original shape. So for all you guys working in biomedical visualization out there, here's your very quick way of creating a DNA, a plausible DNA using Houdini's new chainsaw. And if you want to learn more about Houdini in general, or if you want to plainly support us, consider becoming a patron of ours, which will also give you access to more in-depth courses. And to everyone already supporting us, thanks so much, guys. Without you, Entagma would not be possible. And a very special thank you goes out to Patrick Fillion, Important Looking Pirates, Rafik Anadol, and Chris Hebert. Thanks so much, guys.